Hello and welcome to this brief introduction to FPV and remote control or RC systems. When most people think of drones, they're thinking of something like this, a DJI Mavic, or something like this, a DJI Phantom. And these are completely different to an FPV racing or freestyle drone like the ones you see behind me. And the main difference is that most drones are flown line of sight like this. DJI pilot flying line of sight. He's using a radio transmitter, but the drone is controlled by a stabilization system as well as GPS satellites, which the drone connects to, both of which limit the functionality of the drone. These normal types of drones usually have a camera on a rotating gimbal, which can be controlled to produce professional cinematic quality images and video with a variety of scene types that can be captured using a range of features like, for example, focus adjustment that result in awesome aerial shots like panning and zooming, reveal shots and so on. It's also possible to pre-plan flight paths with this type of drone and control the camera to produce specific shots at specific angles which is also very cool. Now, I flew DJI drones for several years enjoying this type of cinematic flight. But in contrast, an FPV drone is flown in first-person view with a set of FPV goggles like this, where you fly the drone as if you're flying in the cockpit of the aircraft, as opposed to line of sight where you're looking up at the drone itself. FPV quadcopters are drones with four motors and are commonly known as quads and are also controlled from the input on the sticks of a radio transmitter. But a big difference is that the quad can be completely controlled by the pilot with no stabilization or limiting factors. And this means that you can literally make the drone do anything within the laws of physics, of course. But of course, all those tricks like flips and rolls and power loops and dives can only be done with an FPV type of drone. Another major difference is the power that FPV drones have in contrast with normal cinematic drones. They're extremely powerful and can fly really fast. Now, legal limits restrict the speed at which you can fly, of course, but we're talking about capable speeds of about 150 miles an hour. And I believe the record at this time stands at about 179 miles an hour. And that's pretty fast. And they can accelerate faster than a supercar. So if you ever have the opportunity to race against a Lambo on a track, you should be able to leave them in the dust. So these guys are to be treated with respect and caution. And not so long ago, FPV pilots were limited to flying with analog video. But this has all changed in the last couple of years with the advent of DJI digital systems that can be used with FPV quads. And there are other digital systems on the market too now. But generally, this is still limited to 1080p resolution at the moment. So more high definition video footage is usually captured using an additional HD camera like a GoPro or like this Runcam Orange on my Badger here. And this can produce the kind of lovely 4K footage that you'll see from top pilots like Johnny FPV or Mr. Steel. So how does it all work? Let's have a look. Let's take a look at this diagram here showing all the main components of the quad. You'll see two picture inserts here, here and here, which represent the two main systems used in FPV. There's the video system, or FPV system, which you can see from the green dotted line going from the video transmitter to the goggles or rather to the receiver built in to the goggles. Now some of these goggles have um, an additional receiver, okay, that you'd plug into, into here. Um, but these goggles, which are the uh, SkyZone 04Xs, uh, have a, a built-in receiver. Um, 
and the radio control system, which you can see from the green dotted line here, going from the radio transmitter to the radio receiver, which is this little thing here. Now, I don't want to make this lesson too technical because the main aim is to get your quad built and get you flying. You don't need to have a PhD in electronics or avionics to get going, but it's a good idea to have a basic understanding of how these two main systems work. Okay, so remember you've got your video system and you've got your radio control system. In a nutshell, there are four main components to the FPV or video system. You've got your FPV camera, you've got your video transmitter or VTX as we would be calling it, you've got your FPV goggles with the um, video receiver built in or stuck on as a module, and you've got antennas. You've got FPV antennas uh, attached to your VTX here, and you've got antennas uh, attached to the goggles. Um, and this is a polarized uh, antenna, and this is a patch or directional antenna. Now, you've then got your radio control system, uh, and you've got your radio transmitter over here, where you input your commands via the sticks, okay, on the radio transmitter, and also via the switches. Um, and these will send commands like arming the quad, uh, providing throttle, pitch, roll, and yaw to maneuver the quad, which we'll discuss later on, and that's all done uh, via controlling the, the sticks on the transmitter. Uh, and these commands are transmitted via radio signal to the receiver, uh, which then passes on the commands to the flight controller, okay, which is this thing here stuck on the top. Um, and the flight controller will execute those commands. And those are the two main systems you need to basically understand at this stage in your setup to fly FPV. And you'll be learning more on these two systems later like how to set up your radio to talk to the receiver. Okay, the radio here needs to talk to the receiver over here uh, and how to set up your radio, uh, how to set up the frequency uh, you will receive on your video signal as well. So, uh, but we'll do more on that later. So we've had a look so far um, at two components on the quad, which are the VTX here and the um, uh, radio receiver here okay but now let's have a look at all the other parts of the quad and the most important part uh, of any FPV quad is the flight controller itself which sits uh, usually on the top here um, and this is basically the computer or the brain of the quad and it's a circuit board with a range of sensors that controls the movement of the drone by listening to uh, commands from your transmitter uh, your radio, as we've said earlier. And all flight controllers have a main processor, as we can see here, and a gyro that controls the movement of the drone. It also has an, uh, what's called an accelerometer, which basically stabilizes the level of the quad when you're flying in angle mode. But a lot of FPV pilots simply turn this off when they progress to flying in acro mode, which is when you fly the, uh, with complete control of the quad uh, with no auto leveling or stabilization, but we'll talk more about that later. So, as for the processor, uh, this little thing here, okay, like computer CPUs or central processing units, a flight controller can come in lower or higher computing capability. Um, and there are two main different types of um, flight controllers uh, an F7 which has higher com uh, computing capability than, for example, an F4. But prices have come down significantly on flight controllers in recent times. And the one we'll be using in our build is an F7. And this means that it processes commands quicker and it also has more ports to connect peripherals like a GPS, should you wish. But don't worry too much about this for now. Uh, as it's a minor consideration when starting out. 
Uh, and these little ports we're talking about here, we call them UARTs, um, uh, are what we're going to connect all our all our other other parts to. The flight controller also controls the speed of the motors, which is done through communication with the ESC um, or electronic speed controller, as we said here, which sits under the flight controller. Um, and the ESC is connected to the flight controller uh, via a little cable usually, okay, or that can actually be soldered, uh, you know, you can solder the wires onto the, the uh, flight controller as well, but quite often we have just a little cable at the front here which connects the two. Um, and the motors are connected to the ESC via the motor wires, which are soldered onto the ESC. So we can see the motor here and three motor wires and these motor wires are connected or, or soldered onto uh, the little pads on, on uh, the ESC here. So And likewise for this motor here, you've got three wires. One goes to there, one goes to there, and one goes to there. And likewise on this side. The flight controller also acts as a hub uh, for the other main components which are connected or soldered on. And these are the radio receiver, as we've discussed. Uh, we've got the ESC, as we've discussed. Uh, the VTX here, which we've discussed, which we solder on. Uh, and the camera, okay, uh, which we solder on. Or sometimes it's, it's actually connected via uh, a, little, uh, a little port here. Uh, and a GPS, uh, as we've said, which is optional. Uh, and this GPS provides uh, positioning data such as distance and altitude. Uh, and, and can also return your quad to its takeoff position if you need it to. But a GPS, of course, is entirely optional, and you really won't need this um, unless you're going to be flying long distance. Um, and we connect all of these parts on the FC uh, onto these little ports uh, here, or uh, otherwise known as UARTs, uh, which are all these little pads, uh, as I've said here on the top of the flight controller and we're going to solder them on. So there you have it. Uh, you're going to learn a whole lot more about things like RC protocols and ESC protocols and video. Uh, but for now, you've got the big picture and you're well on your way to understanding how to build your FPV quad. So I'll see you in the next lesson.